operate the business with the same amount of leverage? Thank you. Uh, the, second, the second part is the easiest one to answer, so I'll take that. Uh, and I'll throw the first, first one back to Charlie. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energy actually is required with its regulated utilities, and it basically started pretty much with regulated utilities, um, and, and still is dominated by that, and we're interested in buying more regulated utilities. It's required in different ways by different states and by different regulatory authorities to have a large amount of debt because the regulatory authorities will say in Iowa or, or to pick any state, the regulatory authorities are going to say you can get debt money cheaper than you can get equity money, which historically has largely been, almost always been true. And they say that since we're going to allow you a return on equity, we'll say, just pick a figure, but let's say they allow us a return on equity of 9% and we can borrow a lot of capital at 3%, they say it'll result in higher rates to customers if you use it, put in all equity. We would love to have all equity in, in our utilities, uh, but we wouldn't the regulator wouldn't stand for it because it would result in, under the traditional system, it would result in higher prices to consumers. So that's built into the system. And uh, we would, well, our regulator wouldn't allow us uh, essentially to get the same return on equity and, and, and uh, have an all equity structure. Uh, they, and the answer is, uh, you know, we, we put, well, you actually saw in the, in the film earlier, which the people that are listening, or what, the, hearing the webcast didn't see, but, but just in Iowa, you know, we recently got approval to spend three and a fraction billion dollars, but, but they want us, Iowa has a history in like every other state in the union, except Nebraska, which is all public power. But every private powers, you know, they have a history of wanting X percent to be in, in debt. They want, they want you to raise a lot of money in debt because it's cheaper, means cheaper power for the consumer. So uh, the answer is if we owned 100 percent of Berkshire uh, Energy, we would be, we would absolutely be following the same we would be operating pursuant to what the utility commissions tell us they want us to do that. They represent the people of those states. Now, Charlie, do you, do you want Well, the other one's simple, too. It's a historical accident. It's not causing any big tension or breaches of fiduciary duty. We had the same problem with Walter Scott, who was the director for years and years, known stock in the same company, also an historical accident. Yeah. I just don't think it's a big problem at all. Oh, we, we I see no, no behavior from Greg ever that isn't in the best interest of Berkshire. Yeah. And we, we've had various percentages of Berkshire Hathaway Energy uh, ever since we bought it in around 2000. And it happened, we were at my sister who was here, we were at her house and there was a party going on, and 20 or 30, probably 30 people. And Walter said to me, uh, uh, if you got a minute or two, I'd like to talk to you about something. So we went in the library or someplace, and Walter says, you know, we've got this company and it doesn't seem to fit the public mold very well, and would you, like, would you want to buy in and go, go private? And I, I said, sure. You know, turns on the price. And uh, when we got back to Omaha, I was out on the West Coast, we got back to Omaha, and we met with David Sokol, who was the big holder, aside from Walter. And uh, uh, we agreed on a price. And uh, I remember Walter saying to Dave, don't negotiate with Warren. <laughs> he'll, tell you, he'll tell you to forget it and we'll do something else. And uh, uh, so we bought it, and at, uh, so it was 
it was kind of a weird structure from the start. And we had a public utility holding up an act to deal with and all kinds of things. And it's evolved and uh, it now has us with 91% roughly and it has Walter's estate and I don't know where that goes I'm, and uh, uh, at all. And Walter never talked to me about it and I never asked him about it. Uh, but it's one way or another, interest connected with them and the, and the estate now. Close to eight, I guess. And, 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 and Greg's got one. And, and the easy, you know, from our standpoint, if we made a, a deal with, with, if they ever came to us and the, the Scott interest wanted to do something, you know, we'd say fine with him. We'll do the same thing with Greg if he wants to, and he probably would want to. I mean, but from our standpoint, I've never seen any decision remotely. If I thought that would make a difference, you know, he would not be, he just wouldn't be the right kind of person to run um, Berkshire. And, and uh, the problem, of course, is that you've got lots of process that can be involved with insiders and everything. And, and I've got no interest in, as long as I'm alive, you know, my interests are 100% with Berkshire. And the board, probably, and to some extent, a little reluctantly, but they just say, well, Warren thinks the deal's okay, it must be okay, which is true. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I could make a deal uh, with anybody and it doesn't get all messed up with process. But on the other hand, if I'm not around, you know, the pressures are the directors to do whatever the lawyers tell them to do and the lawyers tell them to do this and that and then they want to bring in investment bankers to make a value. And the whole thing is a game from that point forward. And uh, it's expensive. It takes a lot of time. The people, so it would be better if it happened while I'm alive and around, but there's no reason We'd rather have 100% than 91%, obviously, because more earnings for Berkshire. But there's no reason to try and do anything with either the Scott interests or, or, or Greg, unless they, they want to do it. And the logical thing is if anything happened with the Scots, we'd certainly offer it to Greg. But that's, who knows what happens in the future? The one thing I guarantee you, Berkshire Hathaway holders will never be taken advantage of and you know you can you can sue my estate or something like that if it <laughs> if anybody felt differently about that it, it isn't going to happen but it's a lot easier if it's done while I'm around actually than if it's done later but I wish we had 20 more complex events just like it <laughs> yeah, yeah that's exactly true yeah well, it, oh, it it's it's an it's it's a it's a it's a per, it's, kind of, it's a perfectly logical question. I mean, I, 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 but it uh, it is not a problem, and any answer that's arrived at will be good for all concerned. And right now, I've got no I've got no feeling that that well, I don't I have no no, no knowledge at all of um, where the stock. That the Scots have goals, or what they, how they feel about it, or anything, and and, and that's up to them. They're, they're, you know, the Walter was our partner, and as far as we concern, we're concerned, we tr treat anybody connected with them as our partner, and they know that. And they don't have to worry about us taking advantage of them, and and we can understand what if they don't do anything, we can understand that. If they want to do something, we can understand that. It's a good question, though. Thank you.